Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is a reading roundup. Let's just get right into the books that I've read recently. The first one, and I know this will shock you, I actually read it on my Kindle. Can you believe that? I never read anything on my Kindle, even though I have a lot of books on there. Anyways, um, something caught my attention and I decided to read this, um, and it's called The Murder Mystery Book Club by C.A. Larmer. Now, here's what inter what's interesting about this. I actually had a sample on the Kindle and it was written in, I think, 2012, but at the time it was published as Agatha Christ the Agatha Christie Book Club. And that's the sample that I had on my Kindle. And I read the sample and it was interesting enough that I decided to, to buy the book. It was, I mean, it was really inexpensive. Um, and so I, I did to, so that I could finish reading it. But when I bought it, um, it was this updated version of the Murder Mystery Book Club. Now I found all of that really interesting. So the author had originally written this Agatha Christie book club where her main character starts an Agatha Christie book club and they are, they're going to read an Agatha Christie every two weeks or a month or whatever, whatever it was. Um, and then there are more books in this series and at some point the author decided to broaden it out a little bit more so she changed it to the murder mystery book club which required some changes in the first book which I noticed between the sample and the book that I bought which was which was really interesting and as an avid Agatha Christie fan part of me was a little disappointed that she didn't just stick with Agatha Christie what's wrong with that right um, there's enough Agatha Christie books that, that she could have stuck with that. But anyways, um, <laughs> I just thought that was an interesting little thing. So, The Murder Mystery Book Club. This is set in Australia, I think in Melbourne, if, I, if I'm remembering right. Um, and so our main character, um, she starts this book club. And so she advertises to let people know this very specific book club that she wants to start. And she gets four or five interested people who, who are, you know, definitely mystery lovers. Um, and so I love this idea. I'm part of a mystery book club myself, and I really enjoy it. And so it was fun to read this. And the first, the first book that they read is an Agatha Christie, and they are reading. I forget now. Probably Murder on the Orient Express. Um, anyways, um, one of their book club members goes missing and so then they start to investigate so it was a fun cozy mystery and a great way uh to start off to start off the year although uh to be honest i may have read that in the week in between christmas and new year's or on new year's day i can't remember it doesn't matter Okay, I also read Cat Out of the Bag by Clifford Whitting. I heard about this book from Annika from Inking Your Thinking, um, and I'm so glad. This was so fun. This was a golden mystery author, not a golden mystery, a golden age author that I had never heard of, and this was a really fun book. So this is set over Christmas, and our main character, um, oh, I forget his name, and it's it's um, it's written in the first person. Um, <clears throat> him and his wife are visiting friends for the holidays, and uh, and they one night they're going out Christmas caroling, and they are collecting for a charity, the hospital or something. And so they've got the carolers plus two people are, that are going door to door to collect, and one of the collectors goes missing. He disappears. And, uh, and so then they investigate. And it was just really fun. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the writing style. Um, it was a good mystery. Um, you know, our main character is an amateur sleuth, but the police do get involved and he works well with the police. Um, and it was just a really fun, it was just a really fun mystery. I quite enjoyed it. And look at this fantastic map that was in the front. Isn't that great? Um, so this was um, published in, hang on a second, 1939. And so I will be definitely looking out for more from this writer. I, I did really enjoy this one. 
And then I read a couple of Oscar Wilde short stories with my friend Donna. I picked up this beautiful edition of um, Oscar Wilde short stories. And so we read um, The Canterville Ghost, which was so much fun. Hang on a second, I'm gonna find it first. All right, so we read The Canterville Ghost, which was a, a longer short story. It was about 45, 45 pages. And boy, was that fun. It was such a fun story because it took the ghost story and sort of turned it on its head a little bit. Um, you get this family from the United States who come stay at this house and they are warned that it has a ghost. And um, they're like, we don't believe in ghosts, it's fine. And, um, and so the ghost does its thing. And the, <laughs> what's funny is the family's reaction to it. They're not frightened. They just kind of turn around and try to prank the ghost. And so that part was, it was just a really fun story. It was very entertaining. Um, it took a turn that I wasn't quite expecting um, and I just really enjoyed it. It was really fun. And then the next one was definitely a short story. It was really short. It was only like seven or eight pages. And it was called The Sphinx Without a Secret. And I have to be honest, I don't really get that one. I'm not really sure why it was a story. This guy sees a friend of his in Paris and, or they might not even know each other, I don't know. Um, and he's, he's talking about this girl that he met that he instantly fell in love with who had a mystery that she wouldn't tell him, basically. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really get that one. <laughs> but I do really enjoy Oscar Wilde's writing style and so Adon and I are gonna read some more of his short stories together. And then I read The Hidden Bones by Nicola Ford. I heard of this story from um, Melanie Martin and uh, I love archaeology in my mysteries and so I picked this one up right away because it's actually written by an archaeologist um, and so I was really looking forward to good accurate archaeology in the story and this one had a good mystery but I, I'll admit I was slightly disappointed that there wasn't more in the ground archaeology in this story. There was the research that archaeologists have to have to do um, and there was good accurate information about what the life of an archaeologist is like but there wasn't actually a whole bunch of an archaeologist actually digging in the ground which is what I really enjoy so I was slightly disappointed by that. I also wasn't a huge fan of how much language there was in this story I don't think that was necessary at all but aside from those two things I did enjoy this mystery. So our main character is Claire she is she has recently lost her husband and she is asked by a former university friend to sift through the effects of a deceased archaeologist and um, he in the past had a really famous dig that he never published the results from and so now that he's passed away they're hoping to find information about that past dig and what they end up finding is a dead body. So we've got a bit of a, there's a bit of a cold case as well, which I also really enjoy. And so yeah, this one, this one was fun. Um, I think I would read more. I'm hoping that in the next one, there's a little more actual in the ground archeology. span um, But yeah, this one was, this one was fun. And then I read a Dorothy Cannell. This is a standalone. She, I really like her Ellie Haskell series, um, but this is a standalone called Down the Garden Path. And it's about a girl called Tessa Fields who is 21 and she knows that she's adopted. She knows that her parents, the vicar and his wife, found her as a newborn baby on their doorstep and that they kept her, that they adopted her. Um, and uh, But uh, her mother died when she was young and she is now just really interested in finding, if seeing if she can find out who her who her mother was. Um, she is 21 and I did find that part kind of annoying. She is, you know, she's, she's young and a bit naive. Um, so this one was okay. It was, it was an all right mystery. Um, if I, I don't know, part of me feels like it would have been better if it was 
a historical mystery. Like it, it was modern day. Well, to the time this was written in the eighties, I think 1985. And um, if it was like early 1900s or late 1800s even, I think it would have been maybe a little more enjoyable because she tries this ridiculous pantomime to get herself into this house where she believes that she'll find information about her mom. And, uh, and so like it's, there's like gothic elements and like Regency romance kind of elements to it. And uh, yeah, uh, so it was, it was just okay. And then I read the next, the newest in a series that I really enjoy, and this is Murder at the Royal Botanic Gardens by Andrea Penrose. This is the latest in her Rexford and Sloan series. This is Regency era London, um, and Rexford and Sloan are such great characters. Rexford is an earl um, who really enjoys science, scientific study, and um, uh, Sloan, she is um, a widow. Um, who enjoys drawing and painting and the two of them end up getting themselves involved in mysteries. Um, the side characters in this series are so great as well. In this one they're at the Royal Botanic Gardens for a there's a symposium on and while they're there they find someone uh, dead. And uh, so I'm not gonna say too much more because it's like the fourth one in the series and so I don't wanna ruin anything, but I really do enjoy this series. Oh, it's the fifth one. Um, and so if you've never read this, give it a shot. It's a, it's a really great series with really, really good characters. And then I read, I went back to read the first in the Faith Morgan series. I talked about the second one that I read in December um, called The Advent of Murder. And um, I was kind of intrigued enough that I, I wanted to go back and read the first one and then I wanted to read the third one because I think there's only the three out. Faith Morgan is a ex-detective who is now a vicar and I, I find that <laughs> really intriguing. So I went back to the beginning and in this first book, The Reluctant Detective, we, we find out how she becomes the vicar of... Um, the, of Little Worthy is the name of, of the village, somewhere in England, somewhere in Hampshire, I think. Um, and uh, so yeah, she, she's um, been told that this, the, the vicar is, re is retiring at Little Worthy, and so she goes for a visit to see that if it's an area um, and a church that she would like to work in. And so she's visiting um, for the service, and then the vicar dies during the Eucharist, um, which is a bit shocking. <laughs> um, and so she she is involved because she's there as a witness. And also this is the vicar that she was going to retire and that she was gonna take over from. Um, and so, yeah, I did enjoy it. I, I find she's actually, she's a good amateur sleuth because she's not a police officer anymore. And so she is an amateur sleuth, but she does have that history, that background that gives her the advantage over other amateur sleuths. Um, and yeah, I do, I, I, I enjoy her as a character. I enjoy the side characters as well. And so then I also then went on to read the third one, which is called A Saintly Killing. And in this one, the, the church where she's the vicar, St. James, is about to celebrate its 900th anniversary. And so she's commissioned a painting and the painter is found dead. Um, so yeah, so this is a fun little, a fun little series. And then I read um, the next up in my, I'm reading through the Hamish Macbeth series again. This is Death of a Charming Man. I just really love Hamish uh, Macbeth. He, I love him as a character. And in this one, in, in the nearby village that is part of his, um, uh, the, the villages that he is in charge of, um, called Drim, uh, an English man moves into the village um, and is renovating a house and he is really good looking and causes quite a stir in the village. He's very good looking and he's very charming. And so he causes quite a stir because he flirts with all of the women and all of their husbands, of course, are not a fan. Um, and then he disappears. And Hamish is pretty convinced that he's been murdered, um, but he can't get his superiors on board with that theory. I just like Hamish Macbeth and I'm really enjoying my read through of it. 
And then finally, I read Silence in the Library by Catherine Shellman. This is the second in another Regency era series. And um, uh, the main character is Lily Adler. She is a widow. She's about 27, so she's a very young widow. And um, in the first book, she was there when there was a murder and got herself involved. In this book, her father shows up unexpectedly for a visit and um, is not feeling well enough to pay a courtesy call on an old friend of his and he asks his daughter to go for, it, for him. And um, she goes for that visit, meets this man's new wife and agrees to go riding with her the next morning. So she shows up to go riding only to discover that that man has been killed in his library. And so of course Lily gets herself involved. The same Bow Street Runner from the first book is called in to investigate. Um, and so what's great here is there's in this one is there really is a lot of that class um, tension um, because the Bow Street Runner is considered working class, lower class and doesn't have enough of a, uh, what's the word, authority. So like the family, if they want, you know, can demand that he leave and there's not really a whole lot that he could do about it. So that part of the story is really, is really interesting. The mystery itself was pretty good. I did guess um, what was going on, but that was all right. The one thing that I'm, you know, that was not super great and it wasn't horrible, but it was a bit in here is um, modern day sensibilities are, have been given to Regency era characters. And I'm just not a fan of that. If you're gonna write about the Regency, then you need to be, I, I really think that it needs to be Regency era sensibilities. Um, and so that was just a bit, a bit of it in here, but I would, I would continue to read from this series because the mysteries are pretty good. So there you have it. That's what I have been reading recently. Have you read any of these books? I would love to chat with you about them in the comment section down below, and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.